Hello, and welcome to Gus McDowell Games, and thank you to our subscribers. I'm Nick McDowell, and today we're continuing the Allied Grant campaign in Close Combat A Bridge Too Far, a game based on the Battle of Arnhem, Operation Market Garden. In this series, we use the missions in the Allied Grant campaign to illustrate one or more aspects of World War II infantry minor tactics at the company level and below. Each episode, we conduct a basic mission analysis, develop and analyze possible courses of action, then decide and execute the plan in real time, followed by lessons learned. Please remember to like the video and subscribe for more great strategy and tactics content. And if you want to buy me a coffee, the links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description. In this episode, we're in the Arnhem Sector, the Arnhem Bridge Area of Operations. Our objective is the Arnhem Bridge. It is Day 3 of Operation Market Garden, 0600 hours on 19 September 1944. Arnhem Bridge, the Brass Ring. The Arnhem Highway Bridge spans the Lower Rhine River and is the gateway to the German industrial Ruhr Valley. Completed by the Dutch in 1934, destroyed by the Dutch in 1940, captured by the Germans in 1940, and rebuilt by the Germans in 1944, Liberating the Arnhem Highway Bridge is your responsibility. Secure the approaches to the bridge, and then the bridge itself. Partisans report the presence of panzer units in the area, but RAF reconnaissance says no. Suffer as few casualties as possible. You must hold out until your first airborne lads reinforce you, or 30 Corps relieves you. German forces have closed in behind you. If you are forced off this map, your troops will be dead or captured. There is no path of retreat. Let's examine our forces. Airborne Bren teams are the core of the British Army. They use a light machine gun, bolt-action rifles and hand grenades. Use them on the front lines, but they should run or hide from tanks. Airborne rifle teams use bolt-action rifles and hand grenades. The team leader is armed with a submachine gun. Use rifle teams on the front lines and to hold victory locations. They are useless against tanks. Airborne Piat teams consist of an anti-tank bomb projector, a bolt-action rifle and hand grenades. Not as effective as the Panzer Shrek, the Piat's effective range is 8 to 80 metres. Airborne ad hoc rifle teams are low quality replacement teams. They use single shot rifles and hand grenades. The team leader is armed with a submachine gun. Use them to free up quality teams for other duties. Airborne six pounder light anti tank gun teams also contain rifles and grenades. Best used as an anti tank weapon, this gun is also effective against infantry targets. Its high rate of fire makes up for its low armour penetration. Airborne three inch medium mortar teams also contain bolt action rifles and hand grenades. Because mortars can shoot over obstacles, position these teams behind buildings or trees. Use them to suppress enemy infantry and lay smoke screens. Airborne Vickers medium machine gun teams also include bolt-action rifles and hand grenades. Position these teams in multi-storey buildings or locations with long lines of sight so they can suppress enemy infantry. Next, let's look at the map and do some mission analysis. I will develop a plan and then execute it in the game. Our mission is to defend Arnhem Bridge in order to allow 30 Corps to cross the Rhine. We have a parachute infantry company from the British 1st Airborne Division, consisting of two Bren sections, two rifle sections, two Piat teams, and three half sections, with two six-pounder anti-tank guns, two three-inch mortar detachments, and two Vickers machine guns in support. North is towards the bottom of the map. I have marked four areas of interest. Number one, the block of buildings either side of the Arnhem Highway Bridge, the famous bridge across the Rhine. Number two, the block of government buildings with a three-storey public works building to the east overlooking the approach to the bridge. Number three, the raised embankment, bridge abutment and bridge access, overlooked by multi-storey buildings on three sides, any of which can control access to the bridge. And number four, the power station and dairy to the east that provide a covered and concealed avenue of approach to the bridge. This is an aerial photograph of the same location as it appears now. This area was largely destroyed during the fighting, and much has changed since the war. The bridge itself was rebuilt and renamed the John Frostbrook for obvious reasons, but the broad outlines and key locations are all still clearly recognisable. I assess the enemy will attempt to clear the British from this area and recapture the bridge in order to prevent 30 Corps from crossing the Rhine. I anticipate they will bring a mixed force of tanks and infantry. The enemy's most likely course of action is to attack from the northeast, or bottom left, with infantry and tanks. They would place forces in the three-storey buildings overlooking the bridge access objective. Then they would use their tanks and machine guns to develop fire superiority and win the firefight. Finally, they would cross the open ground, possibly under cover of smoke, and gradually push back British forces from the bridge. The enemy's most dangerous course of action is to use their tanks to cover an infantry assault from the dairy and power station to the east, the left of the map. This would enable the enemy to get into the buildings around the bridge quickly, 
and avoid the open ground around the bridge access objective. From there, the infantry would conduct an urban clearance of each of the buildings and use direct fire from the tanks to reduce any British strong points. I control the area and the enemy are counter-attacking, so my plan is essentially defensive. I'll need to identify the enemy's likely avenues of approach and cover these with engagement areas. The enemy's most dangerous asset is armour, so I'll use the open ground around the bridge access objective as the primary engagement area for an anti-armour ambush by 1st Platoon and the assets in the support echelon. 1st Platoon will set up an L-shaped ambush and take up position in the buildings overlooking this area with a Bren section, rifle section and ad hoc rifle section. The Piat team will remain concealed behind the Public Works building just in case. I will sight the anti-tank guns at right angles. If a tank faces one gun, it exposes its flank to the other. On the basis of the good advice you've shared with me in earlier episodes, both guns are deployed in buildings for overhead protection. I will also sight both medium machine guns to fire into this area against troops in the open. I need to protect my right flank against an assault from the dairy and power station. 2nd platoon will cover this flank with a Bren section in the three-storey building on the corner, a rifle section, and two ad hoc rifle sections lying in ambush, and a Piat team in reserve in case any tanks move into this area. Finally, the mortars will remain in defilade behind the State Archive and Provincial Government Office buildings and engage on-call targets. The anti-tank guns will be sighted to cover the probable avenues of tank approach and localities liable to tank attack. They should be disposed in depth and concealment will be of importance, as the enemy will attempt to neutralise them by fire or smoke if located. We have 30 minutes to achieve our objectives. I will now move my troops into position and execute the plan in real time. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the various courses of action and if you've identified a viable alternative. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more great strategy and tactics content. And so we begin. Straight away we detect an enemy panther tank near the dairy. Nothing to the south. There is a second tank to the north, and some troops in the open on the bridge ramp. Enemy mortars open on the six-pounder gun. Lance Bombardier Mulder's anti-tank gun tries to target both tanks, without success. The second tank is a Jagdtiger. Also a Granatwerfer, or mortar squad. I call in a mortar fire mission on the troops in the open, and a counter-battery fire mission on the enemy mortar. There is an MG42 in one of the buildings opposite. The Jagdtiger creeps forward. Into range of both guns. Target tank. Fire! Hit! A flanking shot from Bombardier Dugan's gun knocks out the Jagdtiger. A crippling blow to the German attack in the first moments of battle. But the Panther remains out of the line of fire. The gun detachments go prone, and the company remains hidden. Private Jacob's mortar detachment switches fire to target the MG42. The Panther tank creeps forward. The Jagdtiger cooks off. The Germans are putting down heavy suppressing fire from their machine guns. This time, Bombardier Dugan does not have the shot. Lance Bombardier Mulder's anti-tank gun lines up a shot on the Panther. Second platoon sends their Piat team to hunt the Panther. Mulder's gun slowly traverses. The Panther lines up on Dugan's gun and obligingly presents its flank. Fire! Miss! A tank round kills Private Grey. Fire! Hit! The Panther is knocked out, again to a flanking shot from an anti-tank gun. This battle will now come down to fire superiority between the infantry.
Time to unmask the machine guns. With no attack developing from that direction, 2nd Platoon decides to conduct a clearing patrol of the buildings to the east, and moves up an ad hoc rifle section in preparation. Ah. Meanwhile, the Germans are taking casualties around the bridge ramp. They are under mortar and machine gun fire, with the rifles now joining in. An Alf Clara squad is eliminated. Das Blut. Das Blut. Then a Schützen squad. Das Blut. You can see the crossfire effect from the L-shaped ambush. Granatwerfer now comes in for special attention. The battle ended because the Germans were routed from the map. The Allies gained control of the area, but the Germans are expected to launch a counterattack later. The German forces took excessive losses. I have made Allied progress of 110 against expected progress of 90 by the end of the day. I suffered 1 KIA and inflicted on the enemy 16 KIA and 2 armoured vehicles destroyed. Arnhem Bridge is secure, for today at least. Let's examine casualties on both sides. First, the British. As in the last episode, I suffered a single casualty. Private Grey is tragically killed by the Panther tank. His section leader, Staff Sergeant Van Sant, is unaware of his brother's similar tragic fate just kilometres away. Gunnar Boudreau in Mulder's anti-tank detachment knocked out the Panther and receives the Distinguished Conduct Medal. Well done. Kastner, Cooper and Carnahan in the other detachment have already received DCM for their earlier tank kill. Both figures account for the majority of infantry casualties. Then the Germans. Another Kampfgruppe from the 9th Panzer Division is mostly destroyed. Only the MG42, Granatwerfer and two Panzerschreck squads remain. So, what did we learn? First, a sustain. The L-shaped ambush proved its worth. Both tanks were killed by flanking shots as they turned to deal with threats to their front. And the crossfire from machine guns and rifles was clearly visible during the latter part of the battle. Then, an improve for the Germans. It is difficult to understand the tactical value of using the exposed open ground on the bridge ramp as the line of departure. Under withering mortar and machine gun fire, not one German made it forward of the bridge. The Germans would have been better to start their forces in the buildings, staying within cover and trying to win the firefight. Finally, a fix, also for the Germans. Crossing open ground was one option, and not a good one. The better option for the Germans was an attack from the Darien power station to the east. I'll need to continue to guard against an attack from this direction. Napoleon once reputedly said, never interrupt your enemy when they are busy making mistakes. Next time, I may not be so lucky. Let me know what you think in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and donate, and stay tuned for the next episode.